So this is my newest experiment this year with dense tomato plantings with peppers and watermelon. So we have peppers on the very south side of the bed and all of these peppers were overwintered from last year. And then we have newly seeded watermelons just south of the peppers that will then, you know, bleed into this into this, you know, lovely tarped dark area. But then my determinate tomatoes are within these large, you know, cattle panel uh, tomato cages that I rolled, you know, so I have this super dense, super heavy duty, doesn't go anywhere, lasts me for the rest of my life. Um, ooh, that's not good looking. Is that little blighty bit? Get out of here. Uh, and then on the back side, some additional lettuce, celeries. Um, and then on the back side, we have our indeterminate tomatoes trellised up on a great trellis that I believe Josh Satin has an awesome video on. But yeah, these are single stem tomatoes that are trained up and suckered. Nice little sun sugars coming in. We have sun sugars, sun gold, dark galaxy, which I believe is what these are. Making some fun, cool colors. These guys have really weird growth. They get like some crazy, crazy flowering structures, but very pretty. Already got some jerk faces eating some stuff. Uh, yeah, these are sun golds, just being the vigorous, insane growers that they are. But yeah, single stems. I heavily prune down below, you know, the fruit clusters. And then just walk up, interplanted with a little bit of purple basil. Some weeds I need to weed out of there. This is the remnants of the, the spring bed that was heavily interplanted onions and beets. So we would do clusters, clusters of beets, you know, two to three per cluster, and then harvest as they get large. Same for the onions, two to three onions per cluster, and then harvest my spring onions to let the remainders get big. And then now I have acorn squash seeded in between that will take off as I start to clean out this bed. You can see we've we've harvested a good amount of beets. Oh hi garden helper. Yeah, you bad. Harvested a good amount of beets and starting to pull a lot of onions, letting the rest get big for longer term storage. This was a little bit of an experiment with like super dense beet plantings uh, with golden beets. And difficult to, to weed. I haven't thinned this cluster like at all, so nothing has really gotten bigger. Um, but once you thin them down, you know, they really start to plump up. And then, yeah, difficult to weed. Um, oh, hi. A little interplanted dude in there that I need to... That's another squash that I jabbed in the ground and will come out between everything. Uh, and then these are sprouting broccoli varieties, you know, burgundy sprouting. We've been harvesting off of these for a good month plus now. They are reaching the end, starting to bolt, starting to get, they just get weird little clusters. And, uh, yep, thunderstorms rolling in. Um, and then let's see, so, then in my third bed... Half of it is currently tarped, getting prepped for planting. This was all forked, composted, and then tarped to, uh, you know, smother some weeds before I plant into it. And then, so this bed is my Amish paste and San Marjano tomatoes. And then I have uh, tomatillos in the center. 
doing, you know, Florida weave trellising. The uh, Amish paste are like super, super vigorous, super stiff, stand up well on their own. The San Marzano, however, have like a very droopy kind of, yeah, they seem almost sickly, but they're growing like crazy, so I think it might just be this my first time growing that variety. Uh, and then the tomatillos are rather interesting. I haven't trellised them at all. I was kind of curious on what I do. Do I treat them like determinates? Do I treat them like indeterminates? Um, <laughs> they seem to be putting out some interesting root, root nodules. Um, but no, just kind of letting them do their thing in the center. And they seem to just sort of fall over when they get too tall and then continue to grow up like this one, you know, kind of fell over, but then it's just growing up just fine. So these might do okay. Not too concerned about that. Bit of an experiment. Um, and this was broccoli and cauliflower that I then, you know, towards the end of it, seeded more acorn squash that are now coming up and taking over. And then we'll have green beans on the south side of the squash. Uh, with uh, get uh uh uh, don't be coming into bed, you goof. With Sam being the ever most helpful gardener that he is. Um, strawberry beds. We had a bad late frost that put these pretty behind schedule, um, and then now they're just they're just getting overrun with with summer weeds. So. They will get cleaned up and replant. I'll just leave them for now and replant them over the winter. Um, also, try to tarp better to get all these weeds. We just we're in a big field out here, and we have a lot of birds because of the ponds. So we just get a ton of weed seed pressure from bird poop. Uh, this is my second carrot bed, the new Corota variety from rareseeds.com. They're starting to come in quite nicely. Uh, grew this variety last year and it's just amazing. Germinates very well. Uh, we had a little bit of heavy rain that washed out some seeds so that's why I've got gaps. But uh, this will fill in and do great. Um, and then this was our first planted carrot bed which I aggressively thinned the other day. Um, but we have little finger varieties which are just these long, skinny, yummy things. Sam, what you doing? He likes carrots. Little finger, and then I can't remember the name of this other variety, but it is also making, you know, decent little chunky dudes. You're spoiled. You want more carrots? Yes, of course you do. But yeah. There's our solar panels and our slowly turning grass pasture into wildflower pasture. Hard to see on crappy cell phone camera. But, yeah. And there's the pond with the currently unpopulated turtle raft. When the sun comes out, that thing's full of turtles. It's good times. And a biscuit.